Right, salutations to you viewers. This is your host, Chico Squared. Welcome uh, to this production, brought to you to your former media educational TV. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the blast furnace. Okay, right. The blast furnace is used in purification of iron. Okay, when iron is being mined from the earth's crust, it's mined as an ore. Okay, meaning to say there are some impurities that are associated with the iron. So we have to remove those impurities so that we remain with pure iron. So this is where the blast furnace comes into play. Right. Iron in Zimbabwe, uh, all right, the main iron deposits around the world uh, are found as a hematite. Right. Hematite. Hematite is known as iron 3 oxide. But iron 3 oxide is called Fe2 or 3 uh, in chemistry. Right. So if you check on this formula, iron 3 oxide, we, re we, we require iron only. We don't require this oxide component. So we have to remove this oxide component. And the question is, how do we remove this oxide component? And the answer is, we use what are known as reducing agents. Because the reduction is the removal of oxygen. So we are supposed to undergo a series of chemical reactions which are, are known as redox reactions which uh, involve the removal of oxygen from iron 3 oxide. So in the blast furnace, the first things that you need to understand, that you need to know, the raw materials that are required for the blast furnace. So the raw materials that are required for the blast furnace are as follows. Number one, we require... The hematite, iron 3 oxide. Number two, we require limestone. Limestone is calcium carbonate, CaCO3. And we also require coke. All right. So coke is known as carbon. Okay. Right. So these three raw materials are fed at the top of the blast furnace. And after they are fed at the top of the blast furnace, you need to understand what happens at the top of the blast furnace, what happens at the middle of the blast furnace, and what happens at the bottom of the blast furnace. So after these three uh, raw materials are added into the blast furnace, what air is introduced uh, in the blast furnace? And the first reaction that occurs at the top of the blast furnace, carbon is going to react with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. And then the second reaction carbon dioxide is going to combine with carbon, right, to produce carbon monoxide, okay, right? So we put two here so that the equation is balanced. So this is what happens at the top of the blast furnace. Then at the middle of the blast furnace, we have the following reactions taking place. The first reaction is the indirect reduction of iron ore by carbon monoxide, and the equation is as follows. We have Fe2O3 plus CO, right? We produce iron plus carbon dioxide. So this is a, a 323. It's balanced as 323. If you don't want to forget, right? And we also have another reaction which involves the hematite being reduced by carbon to produce iron plus carbon monoxide. Again, it's a 323 reaction right so this is what happens in the middle of the blast furnace when we are going at the bottom of the blast furnace we are going to have thermal decomposition of limestone calcium carbonate will decompose because of the high temperatures that are within the blast furnace to produce calcium oxide plus carbon dioxide and then calcium oxide is going to react with silica impurities to produce a substance known as calcium silicate, calcium silicate, which is, which is known as slag. So slag is less denser than a molten iron, so it said was at the top. And then molten iron is more denser than slag, it said was at the bottom. So we're going to remove molten iron at the bottom of the furnace. And after rem removing molten iron at the bottom of the furnace, um, it's known as pig iron or cast iron. And remember, this iron is not yet 100% pure. So it is now transferred to 
what is known as the basic oxygen furnace, where a process known as the oxygen lens process is going to occur, whereby um, we have oxygen being blown into the iron, okay, and then you have uh, uh, impurities of sulfur and phosphorus are vaporizing as gaseous oxides, and then we now have a pure iron, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends, uh, make sure that these concepts sink into your brains. I don't know what you are going to do. If you are going to hit your head with a 10-pound hammer, I don't know. But what I know is that at the end of the day, you need to make sure that this information is part and parcel of your deoxyribonucleic acid, also known as DNA. I think I have uh, talked much and I urge you to like, hit the like button, subscribe and share to as many people as possible um, so that uh, your comprehension of concepts is actually improved. And I also wish the best to all those who are going to be writing their examinations. I wish you the best. I wish you flying colors. This is your host, Chico Square, and the crew behind the scenes at Farmer Media Productions. Be blessed and stay blessed. I salute you.